Coming through okay? Yes. So everybody can see it? All right, good. Let me advance it real quick. So what I've got up here is a, is a five minute icebreaker. As people are joining right now, I thought I would throw up some questions so we can so we can get to know each other a little bit a little bit better. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start, and this will allow people to join a little bit late. And I'm gonna start, and then I'm gonna throw it over to somebody else on the call, and they can they can answer these questions too. So um, so my name is Ryan, and uh, the part of the world that I live in is Houston. It's a uh, I live in Spring, Texas. It's just outside of Houston. I work in the logistics and freight forwarding industry, um, moving, moving freight in and around the United States and the, and the world. Um, my experience with other programming languages, I know a little bit of SQL. Um, that might do it. That might actually do it. Um, and then what's, <clears throat> what's playing on my iPod or Pandora or Spotify right now, there's a, uh, there's a band that I started listening to about a year ago called Postmodern Jukebox. And if you've ever heard of them, they, um, they take regular pop songs that you hear now, but they play them in like a 1920s jazz style. And it's, and it's pretty cool. So, um, so anyway, I would recommend checking them out. Welcome everybody, I see a couple more people have joined. So I'm just doing a five minute icebreaker real quick um, so we can get to know each other and allow a few people to join um, over the next couple of minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it over to somebody else to answer these questions. So Chun Li, you're up. Okay, hi everybody, I'm Chun Li. I'm living in uh, uh, Plano, Texas. Um, the industry and also yeah, logistics industry. Uh, it's a global freight forwarder, same as Ryan. Um, experience with other programming language. I use SQL a lot uh, at my work. Um, other than that, um, I use a little bit of VBA before uh, in Excel, <laughs> do some uh, little, like uh, the macros. Um, and uh, what's playing on my um, Pandora? That must be the Christmas songs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have that cycling right now. So. All right. Do you want to pick somebody in the list and throw it over to them? Uh, what about Kate? Hey, Kate. Hi, uh, hi. My name's Kate. Um, I usually am based in LA, but I'm currently in Michigan, uh, visiting family for the holidays. Right on. Um, yeah, I'm in my fourth year of my PhD at uh, University of Southern California. I work in um, environmental health and environmental justice research. I do a lot of spatial um, work with spatial data and things like that. Um, I have experience, previous experience with R as well as Python and um, some SQL, um, but mostly mostly R and Python. And then um, I was playing on my iPad or my Spotify right now. Um, spent a lot of time listening recently to like the Lo-Fi Beats playlists that help me work. So twenty four hours a day, Lo-Fi Beats. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. just just generally whatever's on that. I think is is probably the most common thing now, cool. and I'll pass it over to um, uh, Scalgery. Is that how you pronounce it? Hi, yeah. Sandra. Okay, uh, okay. So I'm French, but I'm living in Calgary, Calgary, Canada. So it's like Texas with uh, minus thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working in uh, marketing, not really by choice, but um, I spend a lot of time traveling, uh, following my husband. Uh, and I was a stay-at-home mom, so I, I had a very uh, short career. Uh, I study mostly statistics and economics uh, and financial mathematics. I learned SAS, so I used to be a very good SAS user. Uh, so SAS, a bit of VBA, mostly to copy and pasting because you could find anything you want on the internet. So VBA, SAS, I learned SQL when I was young as well. Uh, I learned R also for a job, but not the job I have now. I'm using mostly SAS in my job now. Uh, 
And uh, I don't listen too much to music because I have, I have to play with a switch. I have to watch uh, French movies. So I don't have time to listen to music. Yeah, excellent. All right. Do you want to hand it over to somebody? Else? Yeah, sure. Uh, Bruno? Thank you. Hello, guys. So I'm living in Brazil. Uh, I apologize if my English is not very good. So. It's, it's her. Yeah. Um, I work in uh, technology. I, my first graduation, uh, my first degree was in computer science. And at this moment, I'm working, I'm studying in statistics here in Brazil. So I know a little bit about Python and in my statistics course, most of the the exercise and everything is in R. So that's why I'm interested in learning that. Uh, and in my playlist, oh, right now it's Brazilian pop music. So <laughs> yeah. All right. Excellent. Colin, I think you're, you're the last one. Yeah, so hello everybody. Uh, my name is Colin Berkey. Uh, currently, I live in Lincoln, Nebraska, so the dead center of the United States. Uh, but I did used to live in uh, Lubbock, Texas. So I lived in Lubbock, Texas for three years. So I know of Texas, well, West Texas anyways, not <laughs> East. So. Um, so what industry do I work in? Uh, I My official title is I'm a media research analyst. Um, that's just a fancy way to say that I'm a marketing analyst. And so but I also serve as an adjunct instructor at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln teaching courses in um, sports data analysis. So uh, some experience with programming languages in the past. Uh, it started with SPSS, did some VBA, uh, did some SAS, worked in Bash, um, dabbled with Python, and then um, settled on trying to go with R and trying to go as far as I can with R and, and a little bit of SQL too. Uh, what's playing on my iPad, Pandora? Uh, I would probably say the Lo-Fi Beats was another one. Somebody mentioned that earlier. So uh, I was listening to a little Lo-Fi today. Nice. Excellent, excellent. Okay, I well, appreciate it. Well, welcome everybody to, to this cohort. So my, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit more background on what I was trying to do. I've, I've, I've been trying to go back and forth between, with, between R and Python for really a couple of years, and I would pick each one of them up for a week or two weeks or a month, and then I would get frustrated and I'd switch back. And uh, for whatever reason, I decided, let's just go with it. Let's just go with R. And, and as I started to look for some resources, I came across the Slack, and, um, and found out that they were doing these cohorts to go through the book that we're gonna talk about. And then when, um, when I saw that one of the other cohorts was already in the middle, I tried to start up a new one. And I think they, they just went ahead and, and created this new one here for us. So were, were any of you already in the other cohort that was going on before, or is this the first, the first in, uh, experience with it? Yeah, Colin, you, you were in the other one before? No? Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, so I, I'm excited for you guys to, uh, to join. I am learning this as we go. I really just started picking this up a month or so ago and have been working through the problems and decided, hey, what the heck, I'll just, I'll just try to, to organize one of these cohorts. So I put this together and we'll just go through the book. I hope everybody's familiar with the book. If not, we'll, we'll, we'll talk through it. So um, here's the agenda that I was going to go through today, a five minute icebreaker. Just a couple of housekeeping items, ways of getting help through all of this, um, content intro. We'll look at the, uh, the RStudio IDE today, and we'll talk about packages, and then we will draw our first plot. So I have a couple of housekeeping items that I wanted to talk through too. So um, I think typically uh, each week I'll start with a five minute icebreaker just to allow anybody to join late. We'll try to keep it just to five minutes so that oh, we spend enough time on the rest of the, the stuff. Video camera is optional, but encouraged. I'm happy to see everybody is joining with by video camera. Um, we are recording the session. It will be posted on the Slack afterwards. And then make sure that you have a Slack account and most announcements will be under that book club for our book club R for data science. So um, I'm gonna guess that everybody has Slack. If not, let me know and um, we can work through that. All right. Um, we'll probably fill up the full hour each time, but we won't go over. So I've, I've long felt that 
it's important to start meetings on time, but it's more important to end them on time. So we will, as best we can, not go not go past the seven o'clock central hour. Um, and then when I go through these slides, I purposely err on the side of going fast, but slowing me down does not hurt my feelings. So I go fast because I feel like it's better to, to move through the topic that, that or I would rather move quickly and be slowed down rather than to spend a lot of time on something that everybody already understands. Plus, I think it's easier for you to say, hey, can we go over that again? Rather than to say, hey, everybody gets this. Can you go a little faster? So anyway, so I, I will err on the side of going fast. But if you have a question or you want to talk or make a comment, by all means, you know, um, we can talk about that. So I would also encourage everybody to take time to learn the theory. So I think that there's a lot of theory resources out there, and these are only a couple that I've come across so far. Um, they're called, one of them is called the Grammar of Graphics, uh, which is which ggplot is based on, and I think some other plotting um, packages are. There's the Tidy Data white paper, which comes up in chapter 12. And then there's a relate, just overall relational database theory and other kinds of things. So um, what I've found is that learning the, the practice of things and how to type things is one thing, but if you really understand the theory of it, then, um, then it gives you um, more to work with that way. You can, uh, you can, you can work with uh, better information rather than just things that you've memorized. Um, I encourage you to please do the chapter exercises. So we'll spend a lot of time going over the chapter exercises here. Uh, and uh, each chapter will have several. Um, doing the chapter exercises is the second best learning opportunity. And then please plan on teaching one of these lessons because that's the best learning opportunity. So I would encourage everybody at some point to take, to take a chapter. Okay. All right, good. So a few things about um, to get help throughout all this. Of course, ask questions during our call. You can Google things. Stack Overflow is a great resource. You can Google Stack Overflow if you're not familiar with that resource. Um, Slack, the Slack form that we're all in, I've heard that referred to as a less grouchy version of Stack Overflow. Um, and so uh, I've already posted a couple of questions in there and the community is very, very agreeable to answer questions and, um, and to, to be helpful. So I think that that's excellent. Um, there's also office hours, and I haven't had a chance to use these office hours, but I understand that there are members of the Slack community that set aside time and become available for people that just need to drop in and ask questions. And I haven't had an experience with office hours like this in anything that I've done before, and I, I haven't had a chance yet to use it here, but, um, but I have on so many occasions been working through a problem and thought, I just need somebody to talk me through this. Like you can only Google Stack Overflow for so long before you're you're done, and um, and so I would imagine um, using the office hours for Slack would be really really helpful. And if any of you have had experience with that, can you can you weigh in? Have you, has it been successful? Like I said, I haven't done it yet. I think you have to watch for when people have their office hours um, posted, but this website right here, r4ds.io slash calendar, lists out individuals and, and their office hours. Okay. If you're on Twitter, you can do hashtag rstats. So I, I, I subscribe to that one. I'm not super active on Twitter, but I do subscribe to that one and I look at it. And every day people will post with, with information, tips, ideas, um, questions that they have. So it's a, I think it's a good way to help get fluent with what we're working on. And then there's a couple of answer keys for the book. If you haven't come across these yet, there's one by Jeff Arnold, which is, um, in, my, in my opinion, it's a preferred version. And then there's also one by Brian Shallow, which is, which is also good. Um, but I found that some of these answers use um, techniques that are a little outdated. So if you're able to get to, to the Jeff Arnold one, that's, that's the one I prefer. Have, have you come across any other ones besides these two? Anybody? Those are the main ones. Okay, cool. Um, and then there's another thing called cheat sheets, which as we learn different facets of R, um, people have kindly developed cheat sheets, one pagers or two pagers that pack a lot of information about how to use the different um, functions that we'll be talking about. And we'll actually see a cheat sheet here in just a couple of minutes. And uh, a lot of them take the same format. They just cover different topics. So cool, good. Cool. 
Any questions? All right. Then look at the con so some content here. So um, so of course the book is called R for Data Science and it's abbreviated R for DS. And the book itself is at this website if you haven't come across it yet, or you can, it's free. Um, you could order a hard copy off of Amazon, but this is what the cover looks like here. Um, and you can bookmark that. If you haven't been through it yet, there's a table of contents, which takes this form here. So the chat, there's, there's like section areas, explore, wrangle, program, model. There's um, chapters you know, under each one of those. And then once you get under the chapters, like this one, workflow for basics, those are break, broken down even further into sub chapters. And then typically there's um, a section there at the end called exercises. So make sure that you spend some time on those exercises, All right? Okay. And then just a quote that comes from the book here. It says, you'll learn how to get, you'll learn how to get your data into R, get it into the most useful structure, transform it, visualize it, and model it. In this book, you will find a practicum of skills for data science. Just as a chemist learns how to clean test tubes and stock a lab, you'll learn how to clean data and draw plots and many other things besides. Indeed. All right. So first, um, I wanted to talk about the RStudio IDE, the Integra Integrated Development Environment. I can't remember what they all stand for. E stands for environment. Um, I think that's what it is. Um, and then talk about the difference between R versus RStudio. As I understand it, R is kind of the engine that does all the calculations and it's more of the infrastructure. RStudio is the interface that lays on top of that so that you can type things into it. You can follow where your variables are. It, it produces the plots. Um, so one of them is the does the work and the other one is the is the pretty face of it. Um, so for installing R and R Studio, we can skip over this if everybody has R and R Studio installed. Everybody good on that? I think from what we were talking about, it sounded like everybody's pretty much set on having it installed. All right. <clears throat> so we'll do a, a tour of it real quick. I'll bring up mine. And um, these are some of the areas of the interface that I have found useful. And if anybody wants to weigh in on other sections that they find are, are beneficial, um, that would be great too. So, so down here on this side is the console. And this takes single lines of code and processes, processes them one at a time. So you can do calculations on, on this line down here and then it gives you your response right away. Or you can do something like um, assign variables um, kind of all one at a time, right? And they'll process as soon as you hit enter. Up here in this section is the source section and you can do the same thing, but they don't process one at a time. They don't process until you, until you run all of them together. So I've written two lines of code here, but nothing has actually happened yet until you run them all together. And as soon as you do that, you'll see the 11 will produce down here because um, that line of code will run. And then the letter B will show up here as a, as a new variable or a new um, object that's been assigned. Um, did I get close? Maybe I didn't print it. Um, I can't remember what you're supposed to do. What are you supposed to do to make this print down there? I thought that's what it was. There we go. Anyway, um, maybe you have to select it all and run it. Yeah, there you go. All right, so anyway, that, that's the idea, is that when you want to string together a whole lot of, 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 uh, of codes and programming um, commands together, you put them up here in the source. If you want to just run them one at a time, you can do them down here. The idea being that once you have them all listed up here, you can save them and go back to them later. You can run them all together and so on. Over here on the side, as we've seen, uh, there's one called environment, a tab called environment with the values listed underneath. And so as you're creating objects, they'll be listed here with different um, pieces of information about them. Um, 
and they'll just string up right here. Uh, history can show you all of the all the code that you've been writing for a long time if you ever need to go back and look at it. Um, connections is in case you want to connect to a database. It holds the connection information there. Tutorial um, environment tends to be the only one that I've ever really seen up here. Um, there also has a function to import data if you wanted to import from a, you know, from a desktop or whatever the case may be. Okay. And then um, let's see what else. Um, on this side here, there's a, a file system. So you can, you can look through and see where you have all of your different files saved. Um, I have one called R, things like I have a junk working directory that has a lot of, um, a lot of the samples that we've been working with. Okay. Um, plots is where you, where plots will show up. We'll see this one just a little bit after we do our first plot. This is where your graphs will, will print. Packages we'll talk about also a little bit later. Um, this is where you can see where those are, are listed. There's a section for help, which is also really helpful. Um, so if you have any questions about a command that comes up, you can type the question mark and then type, no. Um, question mark and then the, the command and then information documentation about that command will show up here and you can read through it and they'll all contain basically the same information description usage arguments that go into it and some information about that additional details and so on and there's always examples at the end to show you how to use that particular command okay and then there's viewer, which I haven't ever used before. Okay. And then terminal and jobs. I also haven't used these. Um, terminal, I think, is like a, a command prompt. Um, jobs, I'm not sure of. So. Okay. So that was a quick tour. Anybody have any questions or additional comments? As you can tell, I'm still learning my way around it. And I would, if there's anybody that has anything else to add on this, any of your experiences with it, would love to hear it. Uh, just uh, if you are showing a lot of code, maybe you can increase a bit the font size. Um, up here, you mean? Yes, exactly. How do you do that? Uh, you go to session. Um, oh yeah, you you go to session. Oh, you for, you go to session. No, you go to tool global option, and after you can you have the appearance, and you can change the color or just the font size. Appearance. Somewhere in here, then. You calculate you said appearance, right? Appearance. Great. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Oh. No, I mean, you were. Uh, Go ahead, Kate. Your name is Calgary, or what is your. Yeah. You were, you're asking for to increase the font size, like for the whole presentation, right? To help see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was what. Yeah, yeah, I was, yes, it was more for um for you to do it so we can see more. Yeah. No ideas. So Ryan, you can also increase the size of everything. I think you're on a Windows. I think if you hit like Control plus or minus, I think it will make everything bigger. I think. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. There we go. All right. Would you like me to go through that again or, or just uh, for, for future reference then? Yeah. You, you can see it better now? Okay, cool. All right. um, very good. All right. Then this, was, this is the IDE, and I think you'll get familiar with it um, pretty quickly. Okay. Any other questions or comments around the, the interface? Um, I invite everybody to go on mute if you're not. 
All right, it looks like we have a, a new addition, Priyanka. Hey. Hello. Welcome, welcome to the call. Thank you. Can I invite you to, to put your phone on mute when you get a second? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. So no sorry worries. about that. No worries, thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Then, if there's no other questions on this one then, um, let me go back over here to the, to the PowerPoint. Um, one of the, we can take a look here at the cheat sheet. Um, this is the cheat sheet for the, the IDE itself. So you can see how it breaks out each of the different windows that we were just looking at and gives a lot of information about all of that, all of that stuff. Um, this one is a fairly busy cheat sheet. I've seen some that are not quite as busy as this, but if you get the idea, it'll present a topic and it'll give a lot of information about that. So, so these are all available. You can just Google our studio IDE cheat sheet or, or whatever, um, if you find this to be helpful. Okay. And then there's other ones as well for, for different functionalities, which we'll, we'll look at as time goes on. Okay, cool. All right, moving on then to packages. So, so one of the, the main important things that about R and really Python as well from, from my experience with that is, is this idea of packages. So if you think about packages, the, the definition that's given for them in the book is that packages are the fundamental units of reproducible R code. They include reusable functions, the documentation that describes how to use them and sample data. So you can kind of think about them like, like your smartphone, right? So you, if you have your smartphone, the day that you open it, it typically only has a, a, a few functions. It'll only have, be able to call, you can store contacts, you can do messaging, and you can look at the, you know, you can browse the web. And that would be the equivalent of base R, which is just some very basic functionality that comes with, with R. But then you want to add additional uh, features that your phone can do. So maybe you want to uh, have you can make up here, uh, Bitmojis. This is not my, my iPhone, I should clarify. Um, Ovia pregnancy, not my iPhone. Um, NCT buses, Snapchat. Anyway, you want all this different functionality. And so you download these apps and you install them install them there, right? So these would be the equivalent of the packages. And then there's the, and then there's the base R that we also have. Okay? So as you get more familiar and as you work with different needs and you come across different needs with your, with your programming, you're gonna want to find packages that can do what it is that you, that you need. And I would say that undoubtedly, somebody has probably come across your problem in the past or something close to it. And they created a package to help, uh, help accomplish that. So, um, and there's, there's tons of them out there. All right, cool. Everybody good on packages? All right, well then the last thing, really one of the last things we have to do here is to draw a plot, okay? So I would invite you now to, uh, to launch our studio and we're going to draw this plot that's, that's down here coded this way. Okay. But before you get that, before you're able to complete this without any trouble, you need to make sure that two things happen. Okay. One has to do with the tidyverse. And so you have, which is one, which is a, a package, um, one of the packages that we'll use. So make sure that you install the tidyverse. That happens one time. So you only have to do that once ever. Um, but then every time that you that you launch a new session or want to engage with the tidyverse, you've restarted your computer or restarted R, then you need to load the tidyverse or the, whatever package you're working on. So, so make sure that you've installed the tidyverse. If you have not, you use this code over here, install.packages, and then tidyverse inside quotes. Okay. And if you, once you've done that, then you'll want to load the tidyverse. And you do that by typing library and then the word tidyverse there. Okay. So I'm going to give everybody a second. And if you want to just give me a thumb, thumbs up or whatever once you've um, installed and have loaded the tidyverse. Now, 
we obviously aren't going to go through the whole entire tidyverse right now because it's pretty extensive but um, um but we can at least get some exposure to it okay So go ahead and do that and I'll give you another minute. Okay. Everybody good? Good on that. Installed and loaded on the tidyverse. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So then into the source pane, type this string of code and make sure that you pay attention to the case and capitalization. And um, obviously make sure that you get all of the parentheses and the equal signs and the commas and everything in there. Um, if you're not able to see this, let me know. And I can try to make it bigger. Um, but I'll give you a minute to type all of that in into the source pane. And then as a reminder, again, the source pane is this one up here. Okay. Everybody good? Give me a thumbs down if, if not or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. So once that's typed in as it should be, then you can run run this code. You can do that by selecting all of it and hitting run. Uh, I think this one of these will run everything. For, uh, anyway, um, this is definitely a way to do it. Select it all and hit run. And then you'll see, as you see down here, it's loading the tidyverse. And it should populate a graph like this. Success. OK, Colin's good. Bruno, sounds like you're good. Yeah. OK. Kate, Scoggery, everybody good? Success? Awesome. OK. Um, then at this point, you should pat yourselves on the back because you have created your first plot. Although in talking with everybody at the beginning of the call, it sounds like this was maybe a little trivial for for most people who have had some experience doing this already. So in any case, good, uh, good job working through, um, through this content here. Okay. Any questions at this point? Okay. Um, let me, I will just go on to the next one here. So, uh, so this, this actually wraps up everything that I had prepared to go over this week. Um, and so what we'll do next week then is chapter three on data visualization. And I would encourage everybody to read the, uh, the white paper called the layered grammar of graphics and then look over MPG data. Um, MPG is a data source that's part of the tidyverse. So you can get to that by typing in library tidyverse, MPG, and then do a question mark in MPG. Um, and then if you haven't read over the layered grammar of graphics yet, um, I would suggest reading that over with, with this code a little bit in mind, or maybe even have this code out in front of you, because what it, what it does is it talks about the idea of starting with a bottom layer, which is all of this up to the first plus sign, and then layering on top of that some additional information onto the graph. Um, being this part up to the next plus sign and then laying additional layering additional information on top of that being this last part here. So it breaks everything up by by these different plus uh, by the plus sign. So um, if I go back over here over to R, um, the, this first section here 
Um, this is kind of an overgeneralization, but the idea being that this first section here just loads in just loads in the data. It doesn't actually draw anything onto, onto this plot yet, but it sort of loads in the data. And then the second segment being this geome underscore point, everything up to the second plus sign, <clears throat> that will, that accounts for all of these different points that you see to be um, drawn onto the plot. Okay. And then the last one being this geome smooth, geome underscore smooth, that piece takes care of this line that you see going through right here. So, so this white paper that we're talking about, the layered grammar of graphics is this, it, it lays out this concept of, of, a, of a data source at the very bottom layered on top with points, layered on top of that with lines and then so on. And you, know, you do them in, in whatever different order um, that, that's applicable. And then within each of these segments here, things like this mapping, the color, um, those are those uh, have different. Those will impact differently some of the the ways that you visualize what you see here. So colors um, will make these dots be a certain color. You can add in different things if you wanted a a green line instead of a blue line, or if you wanted this this gray section here. To be removed, there's a way you can do that as well. All right. And that brings us to the end of what I was gonna go over with everybody with everybody today. So um, is it possible that the that the IDE was not showing up while I was talking through it, or did you did you not see it on the on the Zoom call? I think we think we saw it. It looked okay. I'm I'm just looking over on on the Zoom right what it's showing me. Uh oh no no, I think it's okay. All right. Good. Okay. Well um I uh, we've got a few extra minutes if anybody would like to cover any topics or ask any questions or clarify, fix anything that I said that was wrong or um, any feedback? We have a couple of minutes, so um, I'll turn it over to you guys. So Ryan, Ryan I have a quick question. Will you? Um, is there? A... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, is there a space where you're going to put the slides or the? Um... Sorry. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Kate. Yeah. Is yeah? Is there a space where you're going to um, put the slides or at the very like? I'm especially interested in like links to the cheat sheets. Is there like a repository where that information is? I'm not uh, sure if you mentioned it before, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is. I'll, there's probably a place to put it in Slack. I'll have to check with one of the administrators on how to do that. So. Yeah, so, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, there is a they are all in the Air Studio website. So yeah, I was saying, so we have a GitHub repository for uh, RPDS book clubs and uh, John will reach out to Ryan uh, later, I guess, with the video of this uh, discussion today, as well as with, you know, the material or the science that he has prepared. So yeah, we'll be able to share that. Very good. Yeah, and then also- Perfect, thank you. Yeah, and then feel free also to Google, um, really just this, where was it? Um, R studio or uh, I yeah R I D E sorry do R studio cheat sheets yeah you can skip the I D E part but if you do R studio and cheat sheets um, it'll take you to the web page and there's a dozen of them you can look over that okay. Colin yeah. you're gonna you're gonna weigh in yeah well so I first I dropped that the resources for the cheat sheets just for the tidyverse stuff in the chat for everybody access oh, cool. Um, the other question that I had for the group is how um, you mentioned that you suggested that we take on one of the sections. Mm -hmm. How are we going to determine the sections? Do we just slack you or are we going to, how, how, how will that process go? Um, I, I'll probably do the next, next week's, um, but then maybe at the end of that call, next week's call, we can find uh, somebody can volunteer to pick up at the end of that one and just move on with the, the next one and just cover as much material as you as you want. Um, I would probably recommend that we just keep going in order as it is on the book um, so that the next person can jump in at the right spot. But um, yeah, I, I feel like it's overall it's fairly informal. So 
Um, so we can just kind of rotate around that way. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining um, this this evening here and helping to support this learning and this sharing. And it's been very nice to meet everybody. And I do look forward to talking to you uh, again next week. And um, with that, hit me up on Slack, I guess. And if, uh, if you have any other questions, and once all this is up, we'll make some more posts there as well. So with that, I'll I'll end the call and wish everybody a good night. Thank you. Nice Thank to meet you. you all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everyone.